Hi, I'm Michelle Chalfant, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself, all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I am Michelle Shelfon, and so happy again to be here with you today, especially with today's topic. This is one of my favorites. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you, well, first of all, a very special guest, Dr. Judith Orloff, but also we are talking all about being an empath or a highly sensitive person. And this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. I grew up knowing what I know now. Going back in time, little Michelle was a big giant empath and had no idea back in the 70s when I was growing up. Nobody knew used this term, at least the people I hung out with. And it was really, really, really difficult to grow up in an environment where you pick up on everything around you. I mean, everyone's emotions. My sense of smell is, I used to call it my bionic sense of smell. (laughs) I was exhausted. I was exhausted until my early thirties, to be honest with you. I remember even when my, when my children were babies and I would put them down for a nap in my early thirties, I would like, thank God they would nap because that was my time to nap. But I napped literally every single day until probably my mid thirties when I learned a lot more about what it was like to be an empath or what that term even meant. So this is a big term. I I hear it so often now, and I'm so grateful because we really do need to spread awareness around what the term empath and highly sensitive person means. That's why we have Dr. Orloff on today. She's fantastic. And we had such a great show. I just want to say, if you're new to the Adult Chair podcast, you can go to theadultchair.com and learn all about the show. I've got all my meditations there. Everything's free. I've got the free inner child download, free journaling prompts. It's all there. Speaking of meditations, though, I just want you to know, I do have a fantastic meditation for empaths. It's for clearing your energy. It's for helping you to find balance and clear yourself off so you're not so exhausted and not picking up on everyone else's stuff. Because that's what we do unintentionally as empaths. We are born this way. And Dr. Orloff and I, we talked all about that on today's show. We talked about the illnesses that you can develop from being really, and I'm going to call it an unboundaried empath. I myself grew up with chronic fatigue, not chronic, not chronic fatigue syndrome, but chronic fatigue, adrenal fatigue. These were all symptoms of being an unprotected empath. Okay. We're going to talk about that today. Anxiety, depression. These are all things that can come again from being an empath and you're just not aware, or even a highly sensitive person. We talk about how to be in relationships with an empath. What if you have an empath child? We touched on that. She gave us three beautiful tools for empaths, like how you can bring yourself back into center, how to ground. She really broke it down so nicely. I'm so excited for you guys to hear this show. It was such a really, really great show. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Judith Orloff, and we will jump right into the show. Dr. Judith Orloff, she, oh, I'm so excited. (laughs) She's so great. She asserts that we are keepers of an innate intuitive intelligence so perceptive that it can tell us how to heal us and prevent illness. She was called one of the quote unquote frontier people in health who was not satisfied with the existing order and pushed for an expansion of knowledge. Dr. Orloff is a New York Times bestselling author and is on the UCLA Psychiatric Clinical Faculty. 
She specializes in treating empaths and, and sensitive people in her Los Angeles based private practice. Dr. Judith Orloff's book, The Empath's Survival Guide, Life Strategies for Sensitive People, is an invaluable resource to help sensitive people of all kinds develop healthy coping mechanisms in our high stimulus world without experiencing compassion, fatigue, or burnout. Let me just tell you, it's a fabulous, fabulous book. Dr. Judith Orloff is the godmother of the empath movement. Her work has been featured in the New York Times, O Magazine, Forbes, Newsweek, USA Today, Wall Street Journal, and many, many, many more. She also has a popular TED at TEDx talk with over half a million views. We had a fantastic, fantastic show. I'm so excited for you, for you to hear this show, but I want to hear from you on how you like the show. So make sure come over to my Instagram account at Michelle Shelfon or hit me up on Facebook. I want to hear from you. I want to know what you think about this show and if you too are an empath. So here we go with the wonderful Dr. Judith Orloff. So welcome Dr. Judith Orloff to the Adult Chair Podcast. Thank you. It's so good to be on. Thank you so much. Um, we're thrilled to have you for sure. Um, I was just sharing with you. I love that you also break things down and make them very simple for people to understand. And I love all of your work. I was saying that I followed you as long as I can recall. I don't even remember the first time I found you so many years ago. But we're thrilled to have you on because the term empath has been coming up. I don't know why. Are you noticing that lately? Like over the last couple of years, it's like a common buzzword. Are you realizing that? Well, oh, totally. My when my book came out, the Empath Survival Guide, about two years ago, it just you know helped open up a vortex of empaths who are coming out of the closet. People who you know have been labeled as weird or you know overly sensitive or too intense. All of these people now are coming out and finding a voice. Yes, and that's what I'm. I'm really you know, how, trying to help people do, because so many empaths have been in the closet all these years. I was a, an empath child, and I grew up believing there was something wrong with me, and that I had to somehow keep down my gifts and not express my sensitivities. And my parents, who are both doctors, told me to just get a thicker skin, mm -hmm. which didn't help anything, because I didn't know how to do that, nor did I it made me feel like there was something wrong with me. So the whole message is there's nothing wrong with you. If you're an empath. No, I agree. How, how did you discover that you were an empath? Like, how did you finally understand, oh, wait, this is what's going on with me? Well, it took some time because as a child, I was an only child and I didn't have any support. And so I just thought there was something wrong with me and that I had a fantasy there would be a spaceship landing in my front yard to come and take me <laughs> to my home which wasn't here. So, yeah. you know, I felt just alone and I was very quiet and inward. And then I, to cope, I got involved with drugs and not anything I suggest, but sometimes empaths do to repress their abilities and to decrease the overstimulation. And then, you know, this was a long time ago. And then, you know, I went over a cliff in a car. I've been Tuna Canyon in Los Angeles, and my parents were so upset I was killing myself, they forced me to go see a psychiatrist. And that, thank God, and that man just happened to know about intuition, know about empathy, know about sensitivities. And he said, in order for me to be whole, I've got to embrace this part of myself. So that was the beginning of my journey. Wow. How fortunate were you to have someone like that? I mean, that was divine intervention for sure. Because oh. I mean, I know, I mean, I'm 52 right now, but I know even when I was growing up, I so related to your story, feeling different. I was shy. I hardly spoke till I was six and I didn't understand. I always felt so different. Like what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I don't feel like I fit into this world. So I relate. And then I got very heavy into drugs and alcohol starting in high school and then into college. Wow. I don't at all anymore, but I did because I was numbing out. I was like, what is wrong? I remember thinking, what's wrong with me? I'm broken. There's something wrong. Tell our audience, if you don't mind, just let's start out with what an empath is for someone that's hearing this term and they go, I don't even know what it is. 
How would you define yeah. that? Yeah, well, in the Empath Survival Guide, I have a 20 question self assessment test, which is really important that people take to find out if they are an empath and how much of an empath they are. And some of the questions include Have you been labeled as, quote, overly sensitive all your life? You know, are you an emotional sponge and tend to take on the emotions of others? Are you sensitive to noise, smells, or excessive talking? You know, do you prefer one-to-one -one interactions versus being with large groups? Do you get overwhelmed by crowds and prefer alone time to revive yourself? So those are just some of the questions on the self-assessment test. But empaths don't have the same kind of filters that other people have in terms of emotional or physical filters. And so when something intense is going on in the world or your life, you may have a tendency to have it be overwhelmed and be overwhelmed by this much more so than other people who tend to dissociate more or block it out. Empaths have a harder time blocking it out. That's not what we do. You know, that's not what we're good at. We're good at being open and vibrant and connecting with people. And so many healthcare practitioners are in past and we're good with loving and being there for somebody, but we're not good at blocking intense things out. <laughs> so that, that's why the yeah. self-care techniques are so important. And I wrote a book called Thriving as an Empath, which was 365 days of self-care techniques. One by one, you read them, how not to absorb other people's energy. How do you do that? Um, how do you stay centered in the midst of chaos? How do you tune into the seasonal changes and the energies of nature? You know, all of these are important self-care skills. Empath, it's great to diagnose yourself. It's amazing to find out if you are an empath, but then you need to learn self-care techniques. Yeah, I 100% I agree. Can you give us just a few of the techniques? And again, when you said in chaos, and so many of us are sitting, of course, in chaos right now, what are like your, your top three favorite? And I know that they're in your book, but what are your top three favorites? And, and what are some that you would recommend for the chaos that we're in right, right now? Well, number one, keep breathing. Mm -hmm. Don't hold your breath because that keeps negative energy and fear and panic within your body, which you don't want. And so notice as you're listening to this, if you're holding your breath, mm -hmm. you know, or if you, you can take a few deep breaths throughout the day. And then there's a meditation practice that I use. I'm a big meditator. That's one of my, my techniques that I use to center myself. But if you're just beginning or you don't want to meditate for a longer period of time, there's a three minute heart meditation where you can put your hand over your heart and take a breath. Focus on something you love, like the ocean or the night sky, water movement, whatever it is, and begin to allow your heart energy to open so you can be centered and embodied. People, many empaths are having problems during this time because they're not embodied anymore. They're just in their minds and they're in fear, panic, and suffering is in the mind. And so if you bring it back to the body and the heart, which is the healing energy, you can recalibrate yourself. And so it's important to do that many times a day, even just a breath, even just a hand on the heart. Mm. And also it's important to set clear boundaries with people because there's so many people in panic mode who are frustrated, overwhelmed, triggered, and you really don't want that around you. And so you don't want to attract you know, difficulties. The more you work it up, the more attention is on you and attracting it. I'm not saying you're going to cause the disease. I'm not at all saying that, but I know that what we focus on, we bring towards us. So just to be aware of that. And if you have friends that are you know, really you know, panicked and not in their center, just ask them not to share with you. You know, it's yes. just, it's, you can't afford it at this time. Empaths are not that great with boundaries, but now is the time you, you have to learn them. You just have to. Yeah. And turn off the TV, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, my God. It is so scary. If you watch that television and see what's happening versus just look outside your window. Yeah. Look outside your window. Focus on that. No, focus on. No, I just posted on Facebook a picture of a sea anemone, a deep green heart chakra color sea anemone filled with life force. 
You want to focus on that. You don't want to focus on death energies. Now is not the time to focus on death energies. It's the time to focus on life. So don't get seduced into thinking about it, focusing on it. Yes, I agree. You really don't. I agree. In nature, you know, I, I didn't know why. Again, I think probably when I found your work, who knows? 20, 30 years ago. I don't know however long ago it was, but nature, in fact, I was working this morning. I'm so excited because it's warm enough to now I'm in Nashville and to go sit outside and I bring my laptop out there. And in the morning, I've got all the birds and I've got the trees and it feels like I'm sitting in heaven. Like to me, yes, I'm like, what, you know, I said to my husband, do you feel this way around nature? Because put me on the ocean, a lake or anywhere in nature. And it just, it changes my state. What is that with empaths? What is happening? Well, we're open. Our bodies are open and we're connected to the earth. In the book, I talk about earth empaths, plant empaths, people who can, we we tune in to nature. It's our way of being. It's positive energy, tuning into the natural forces of life and enjoying the flowers, enjoying the grass, enjoying the little birds. We have little hummingbirds and a feeder out on our porch and just watching them is such joy. You have to allow yourself to feel all that and take in the positive energy. That's one thing empaths are so good at if you allow it. Well, speaking of that, I want to shift over to, in your book, you talk about this. Why is it? Because we are so heart-based as empaths and we're so connected to nature and to all of these beautiful things. Why is it that we're attracted to or could be attracted to narcissists? Yeah, there's a whole chapter. On I you. know. What did it tell us about that? <laughs> important it's really important for empaths to know this because empaths are giving and loving and give people the benefit of the doubt and want to heal others and want to be compassionate and so they often attract or sometimes attract narcissists who have what's called empathy deficient disorder Mm -hmm. which means they're not capable of empathy because their brains are wired differently Mm -hmm. And although they can be extremely seductive, extremely smart, extremely intuitive, they can't give you love. And that's what's so hard for empaths to get because I've treated so many empaths in my private practice who say, oh, no, I could just heal him or her. Just give them time. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sorry to say with the full blown narcissist, it's just not possible. And I know nobody wants to hear this, but. You know, I work with so many people, and there, there are people who have narcissistic traits. That's a little different. But a full-blown narcissist doesn't have an open heart. And so it's hard for empaths to get that. That's why I like to talk about this ongoing. Yeah. So people, empaths can wrap their mind around this. It's hard because they're so loving. They think everyone is that way. And psychopaths, narcissists, and sociopaths are not that way. They don't have a conscience in the way that you might feel bad when something happens. They don't have that same right. thing. Exactly. It's, it's, so you've got to begin to allow that truth in so you don't keep getting attracted to your narcissistic father or narcissistic mother and hoping to heal it in your partner. Now, that's what, what happens sometimes. And, and, you know, it seems like it might work, but it really doesn't work. That's not how you heal narcissistic abuse. You no. heal narcissistic abuse by connecting to yourself and change, remodeling yourself in terms of, you know, who you're attracted to. Because there's an autoerotic component to narcissistic attraction if you had a narcissistic mother or father. as when you're babies, you have this autoerotic connection going on with your parents and then as adults flash forward you're why are you so attracted to narcissists you know why are you turned on by narcissists physically now it goes back to the early parenting believe it or not Mm. why is it so hard for us to see that or to even set the bound to set boundaries in general as empaths i know that is something i've had to work on my whole life but why is that so hard for us as empaths to set these boundaries because we're helpers and healers and mm-hmm. codependents. You know, yeah. a theme I talk about is the difference between being a codependent and a healthy giver. 
A codependent is when you become too involved in other people's lives when it's none of your business. Yeah. Um, and learning how to give but not over give. Learning how to help but not over help. Those are techniques in thriving as an empath. And they're techniques. There's a skill set to learn. And mm. so when you're exploring these aspects of yourself as an empath, don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. If you're a codependent, fine. So many of us have codependent tendencies. They're just all, it's all part of the healing process for empaths, being aware of this. Yeah. You talk about, in chapter three, the empaths and addiction Talk a little bit more about that. I know for myself when I was a child, again, this is back like in the 70s. <laughs> you know, nobody talked about this back back then. Um, uh, you know, it was a long time ago, but I remember discovering food and I remember feeling like, oh, wow, when I eat pizza or carbohydrate, like pizza or pasta, I was Ital I'm Italian. So pizza and pasta, uh -huh. I feel so much better. Now I'm exhausted, but I feel better. What is it about that? Like, talk, talk a little bit about that empaths and addiction. Well, empaths, some empaths are, are prone to addiction. I've been in 12 step programs for 30 years, and they've been incredibly helpful for me. But with empaths, they're very, very sensitive and they tend to self medicate overstimulation, chronic sensory overload with food, with drugs, with sex, with shopping, because it numbs you out. Mm -hmm. And it somehow temporarily takes the pain out of being so sensitive, but it, it doesn't work. It's just an ongoing process where you're going to bottom out and be even more miserable. So, you know, I work in my private practice with many empaths who are in recovery, you know, who are recovering empaths too. You know, how do you be sensitive and loving and open in a world, you know, that's, you know, full of, of all these crazy energies around but that's what we can learn and that's the empowered empath is somebody who can stay centered and deal with all the many energies here on earth and strengthen yourself and, and be a leader in that that sense and then you can help other empaths you know i, I have a, a an empath support group on facebook with you know almost i think eighteen thousand empaths mm -hmm. and i wa watch them grow you know i watch them mm -hmm. Come, come in, oh, I'm so worried, I'm such a wreck, I'm so exhausted too. I can handle that toxic person now. Mm. You know, I can be on top of it. So you go from kind of you know, all the issues that come up with empaths and then you learn the skill set. And then you're such, it's so beautiful for me to watch because then you have an empowered, sensitive, empathic person who's also strong. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to have to join your group. Yeah, <laughs> I'm joining that group for sure. Well, and I will put and I will put the link in the show notes to your group for sure. sure. Yeah, for sure. Talk about um you you you've talked about this before when we are overwhelmed and go to anger. Yeah. What is that about? Why anger? What what happens? And that is something that I absolutely have experienced because I find myself I I have to really watch myself with my work because I can go into workaholic mode. And that's how I think I'm just like not feeling because I'm, I'm overwhelmed with emotion. But then I find myself get tripped up into anger. I'm like, why am I so angry? So can you talk about that just for a minute? Yeah, that's so beautiful what you just said. Just, just that you're asking yourself the question, why am I so angry? Mm -hmm. As opposed to dumping it on people. Mm -mm. So, no. Empaths get angry when they're overwhelmed and they get yeah. snippy. Yeah. And they get, you know, a little bit standoffish and aloof. That's why other people sometimes think empaths don't like them or empaths are being snooty because they keep a distance. And then they get angry when they're overwhelmed. You know, that's not a good habit to get into. So just notice that about yourself. And if you notice your tone of voice getting snit snitty, just say, all right, I need to take a step backward here. I'm on sensory overload or I'm being emotionally triggered by something and I need to take a look at that in myself. Mm -hmm. right? It's not that anger is a human emotion, but you don't want to dump it on somebody. You can express it mindfully. This is a whole big subject. And I have a book, Emotional Freedom, that talks about transforming anger and how to work with it. But how to work with anger. Anger is an energy. All emotions are energies. So you have to learn how to work with it. And when you're triggered yourself, like you did, you noticed it and you begin to work with it. Like now, you know, in this 
situation. I take walks around where I live and keep six feet apart. And I get extremely enraged. I notice this in myself when people don't honor that and they're just acting like nothing happened and they don't honor the six, six uh, foot. Yes. Between people, I get very enraged and I talk to them in a disrespectful way. Mm-hmm. And so I, I notice that and I, I'm working on how to, how to express myself to them in a more even way. But I see, I notice it. It's the process of noticing it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's raising your awareness and, and, and exactly. So, so the, so if we are feeling anger and, and I think you're, you and I are not alone. There are a lot of people, would it be going back to meditation again and getting back in? for me, I, I've committed to taking the weekends off. I will not allow myself to work. And instead I'm doing a lot more journaling and sitting with myself and really feeling out those emotions. Is that what you would recommend if someone is feeling angry? Yeah, I think that's great. But just take a step backward. If you're getting angry at your mate, if you're, there's a lot of people are in self-isolation now, so they're with their mates and children all the time, which Mm -hmm. is a challenge for empaths, you know, having your personal space invaded like that. Um, So yes, find your own space. Find out why I'm so overwhelmed. Talking honestly, I'm so overwhelmed with this situation is so much better than acting out with anger and making people think you don't love them. Right. So true. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So you just have to be lovingly aware of, mindfully aware of whatever emotion you're going through. But just know it's all natural. We have, as human beings, we have everything, anger, compassion, self-doubt, frustration, depression. We have everything. People have more of one than another. But yeah. you have to learn to work with that as empaths, you know, and see that as part of your job description. This is so good. I have one more question for you. I know we have to end. Speak about, if you could, and this is also in your book, if we're not careful as empaths, we will get sick. And what are some of the experience or the illnesses that you have experienced in your private practice with empaths? I I know for myself, it has been, which again, this is why your work is so powerful because it really helps people understand what the heck has been going on probably most of their lives. It just makes sense to me, all of your work, but like adrenal fatigue, I had that my whole life. I could not figure out why. Yes, I had some childhood trauma, no doubt about it. And that really wreaked havoc on my adrenals. However, it's the emotional or the emotions that I was living in my whole life that kept me on high alert as well. And also I was in anxiety, in and out of anxiety and depression. What else do you find with empaths though, with their health? Right. Now that's what happens if you're on chronic sensory overload all your life, that tends to make you prone to exhaustion and getting sick. And so the first thing I do when working with an empath is help them reduce their sensory overload so that their body can relax. And that sensory overload means too much is coming at me too fast for too long. And so that causes the stress hormone cascade, which decreases your immunity, leads to exhaustion. You can have fibromyalgia, all kinds of autoimmune dis- disorders. You can have depression, anxiety, you can get frequent viruses. Whatever happens with decreased immunity, you can be prone to. But you can turn that around by learning to calm yourself and notice when you go on sensory overload. But that might, in the beginning, that might take a little bit of time because if you've been on sensory overload for 30 years, let's say, it's going to take some downtime to quiet yourself. Yeah. Tell your body is not going to be like that anymore, that you're going to be aware of calming yourself. So it's a loving process of healing, of being sensitive to yourself, of not putting yourself down and saying, Oh, I'm too sensitive. I should have learned this years ago. You know, that no, no time for those kind of voices. It's all about self compassion, self love. Honey, you're all right. I'm going to take care of you, and all of that. You know, you just have to be very loving with yourself during the time of awakening as an empath. You know, this is so powerful because I'm hoping that people are waking up as they are, as they listen to your, to this, to the words you're saying, because we do beat up on ourselves and we sit with anxiety and depression. I know myself many years ago, almost 20 years ago now, when I sat with a therapist and she said you're that she had a feeling that I was bipolar and I'm like, really? And I was not. 
And I said, I don't feel like this is a chemical response that's happening. I just go very high or very low. And she says, no, no, you need medication. And I didn't take it. But the more I learned about being an empath, the more I learned how to balance out, ground myself. I don't have those mood swings anymore. It was not bipolar. It was an empath being an empath. And she didn't know what that was, the therapist I had at the time. And I said, oh my gosh, how many other people are being diagnosed with this? It's not right. And I was exhausted all the time. I don't take, I used to take naps every day, the whole bit growing up. And I don't do that. But misdiagnosis, I would guess from therapists that are unaware of what empaths are. Would you guess that this is happening? Hopefully not as much now, but Way back when. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it happens all the time in, in traditional medicine because the word empath has, hasn't quite penetrated the zeitgeist of traditional medicine, though. I give workshops for healthcare practitioners. I just gave one recently on how to treat empaths and how to be an empathic practitioner. Um, I have a, an audio program on becoming an intuitive healer. So I, part of what I do is, is treat is uh, educating healthcare practitioners so that empaths can have a safe place to be and be understood more. Yeah. I mean, I think so many people are walking around as empaths and they have absolutely no idea. So I'm, my hope is that this show today with you is helpful and they really start digging in and learning. I would love to direct my audience to your website. So please let us know, number one, what's your website? And let us know, I know you have an online course, but what else? And you have your Facebook group. Let us know where to go and what you are offering right now. Well, you can find out information about the Empath Survival Guide and also my book, Thriving as an Empath, and the online course on www.drjudithorloff.org. L O F F dot com. And you can go there and there's all kinds of information about empaths. Um, there are the Zoom classes I'm, I'm giving now to help support people through this time. Uh, there's all kinds of free material there and, and blogs and helpful information. And my Facebook group is also there and it's called Dr. Orla's Empath Support Community. So I hope you enjoy all the material and, you know, especially the course now is a good time to go through the nine lessons of empaths and health, empaths and emotions, empaths and relationships, empaths and love. Each lesson is a different topic to really get a good foundation in being an empath. So I encourage you to, to focus on the course, you know, as well as the other pieces of information I offer. What was the name of that course again? Uh, Dr. Oh, the Empath Survival Guide online course. Oh, the Empath Survival Guide online course. Got it. I was writing. I'm I'm taking notes as fast as I can uh, as I listen. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. And this is the night you said nine lesson online course, nine lessons, nine video lessons that I teach, so people can connect. Perfect. I'm adding all of this to the show notes, you guys. Well, goodness gracious, this has been amazing. I am, again, so honored and grateful to have you on today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Judith Orla, for spending this time with us. I really appreciate you being here today. You're very welcome. Thank you. All right, everybody, that does it for us today. I hope that you enjoyed the show. And for more information, again, you can go to the show notes at theadultchair.com on the podcast tab, and you will find all of Dr. Orloff's beautiful offerings. And I'll see you all next week seated right here in the adult chair. Mm -hmm.